Hello Year 13 and welcome to the first of our online learning videos which will hopefully be a wonderful thrill as you enjoy listening to the sound of my voice and remembering all those wonderful times learning ethics in the classroom. You can imagine it now. You can imagine room 13 all around you and pretend you're right there and I'm standing at the front saying something very witty which is unlikely to happen while I'm recording in front of a computer screen. Now, for those who were not in the lesson last time, last week on Wednesday, we started looking at the update to natural law from John Finnis, and I gave out copies of this wonderful worksheet that you can see here. And those of us who were there, we filled in the seven basic goods, the nine requirements of practical reason, and the nature of the basic goods. And we compared how John Finnis chose to make some changes from Aquinas's natural law that we've learned about previously. Now, if you weren't here for those, then I would simply state for the moment, it's good to grab a revision guide, whichever one you've got, either the one we printed in school, or if you have an official one, and use that to fill in those three sections. And that will pretty much have you caught up on what we've done so far. I'm going to just continue on ahead to the next section so that we can hopefully get most of this uh, basic understanding of Finnis sorted. Then we can go on to evaluate and start applying him. So we understood that the seven basic goods essentially replace the five primary precepts and they're much broader areas of good, things that we should aim to be fulfilling or achieving. And the nine requirements of practical reason, which is one of the basic goods, practical reason, um, help you to achieve the basic goods. So we're thinking particularly at the moment then about how we actually make decisions with Finnis's natural law. The sixth basic good of practicable reasonableness will help you to follow uh, the seven basic goods. You need to make rational decisions, and these will lead you to participate in the other six goods. Now, I'm not going to go through, as I say, the basic goods or the requirements of practical reason in full right now. I'm going to go on ahead. If at any point I go too fast, well, the beauty of a video is you can always pause it and replay it. Okay, so I'm going to move on. You do have freedom when you're making choices with Finnis natural law. You are trying to fill the seven basic goods, or at least some of them, and you use the requirements of practical reason to guide you. There are actions that obviously will go against some of the seven basic goods, or one of them, and those actions would be wrong. An action that actively harms a good is wrong. Okay? But sometimes you will have a range of activities to choose from that will support the basic goods. It's not necessarily the case that only one thing will support them, it might be a number of things could support them. And so, all things being equal, you would have a, a choice of activities or, or uh, decisions to make, and many of them could all be achieving the basic goods. The important thing, as we said before, is to remember not to prioritize the goods in a sort of arbitrary way, you must have a good reason why sometimes you prioritize one good over another. You never reject one. Um, and of course, you never try and do anything that would actually damage a basic good, even if you think in the long run it would be uh, serving them. You can't damage them in order to serve them. Okay? Now I'm going to flip over to the revision guide here. And we'll remind ourselves about making decisions using the basic goods. Remember that the goods and the requirements apply equally to everyone. There's no sort of inequality going on here, okay? And this is what we're kind of saying just a moment ago. If you're deciding what to do with your day, you could choose to listen to music, you could go to college, go to a party, volunteer for disaster relief. All of these actions would support uh, at least one of the basic goods, and they don't harm them, so you could choose from, you know, any of those actions. Even now, while we're all, you know, staying at home and under, uh, you know, coronavirus lockdown, well, not lockdown, but you know what I mean, quarantining, self-isolating, we still have options about the different things we do each day, and there's a whole choice of actions you could make uh, that might all serve basic goods. Maybe you listen to music in your bedroom, maybe you study and listen to the latest online video with Mr. Hodge, maybe you read a book, maybe you help a family member to bake a cake. Uh, all these things could serve a basic good, and they are all valid choices. There will, of course, be some wrong choices, ones that harm basic goods. Uh, so if, you know, you're in isolation with family members who are really driving you up the wall, I'm afraid, no, you cannot murder them. 
Yeah, we know you were thinking it, but you cannot murder them, okay? Also, spending all your time doing absolutely nothing wouldn't really serve any of the basic goods and could be considered to be an inefficient use of your time, so that probably would also be a wrong choice, but there are many equally correct choices. Now, we talked earlier about theoretical and practical reason, and there are definitions of both up here. As a reminder, theoretical reasoning describes what is true and logical, whereas practical reason tries to decide the best way to act. And not everything in practical reason can be proven. We talked about the fact that we assume what we experience day to day is actually real. We can't prove that, but if we denied it, then it's kind of impossible to, you know, pursue knowledge and do anything meaningful. So practical reason is deciding how to act. Now, if two statements contradict in theoretical reason, one of them must be false. Okay? I cannot both be a bachelor and not be a bachelor at the same time. My cat cannot both be a cat and not be a cat at the same time. According to theoretical reason, that's illogical. One of them must be false. In practical reason, there can be two different actions, contradictory actions, that could actually both be morally correct choices. Um, it's up to a human's free will to choose which one they will adopt. Okay? For example, you might choose to read a book alone in your room, or you might choose to go and bake a cake with someone else. You can't read a book alone while also baking a cake with someone else, but both of them are morally correct. The important thing about this, then, is the seven goods and the nine requirements, they don't determine every single part of your day-to-day -day life. They give you the overall view. They give you a structure and goals, but they don't determine exactly what you're going to do minute by minute. Okay? Perhaps a little different to Aquinas' natural law, uh, which feels a lot more strict in its rules. Not so much the same thing here. We're getting sort of areas of good to work with, um, rather than just fulfilling, perhaps, particular precepts. I'm going to go on and talk about the common good for a moment. Now, Finnis notes that humans do live in groups. Uh, this helps the good of friendship. We're also more productive when we work together. Okay. Uh, remember, the eighth requirement of practical reason is the requirements of the common good. Foster the goods for everyone in the community. So we need a community for that. The common good is when all members of a community can pursue the basic goods for themselves. But the common good isn't something you achieve. You don't get to a point where you go, ah, it's finished, I've completed the common good. No, you participate in the common good, okay? But a very important part of society. And I think that's pretty much covered quite here by our revision guide, so I'm not going to read through all that. Do have a look, though, yourself. Now, authority then comes in here, and we do have a need for authority and laws. This is the last point that I'm going to touch on in this video. You might understand, of course, the idea that actually in order to satisfy authority and laws, sorry, in order to satisfy the common good, we need authority and laws, okay? We know that if we're aiming at the common good, then we need to cooperate. And our own well-being uh, will also be served by the well-being of those around us. If society is unfulfilled, I'm less likely to be fulfilled also. We want everyone to be able to seek the seven basic goods autonomously. And actually, law and authority can help this to happen by making sure we all have a fair chance. We could seek our own individual goods by buying all the toilet paper at the supermarket. <laughs> How very relevant. Or we could remember that actually everyone needs to take part uh, and have access to toilet paper. And so everyone should only buy the amount that they individually need. Of course, if you can't trust people to do that, you may need rules or authorities to enforce that, and that way everyone can achieve their goods. So, there is a difference for Finnis between morality and law, but when the two overlap, well, that's where the law has full force. You know, natural laws and moral theory will establish what's good. Hopefully, the law provides rules that allow us to coordinate with each other, resolve disputes, and serve the common good. If the law helps people to collaborate, to achieve the common good of everyone, and it's in line with the seven basic goods, well, it's a good law. An unjust law would stop the basic goods being achieved. It's still a law, though, and we might be even obliged to obey an unjust law if breaking it would threaten the common good. So, 
general disobedience might break down the system of authority and make it harder to coordinate people. We might still disagree with the law, but overall, if it actually serves the common good more to follow it, then we might be best to do so. The important thing, though, about authority is you don't need unanimity. You don't need everyone to agree. You just need a leader in place who will act as coordinator. You know, they will make these decisions, and then everyone else can be free to pursue their basic goods without stopping others. Hopefully, it's non-coercive. That's what we're aiming for. We want to avoid the use of force. A good authority will coordinate the actions of a community while leaving individuals freedom to pursue the basic goods autonomously. Hopefully no force, no intimidation, but just coordinating so that people can do their thing. Let's just have a look at the revision guide for a moment here and see if there's anything there worth adding. Finnis does believe that law is morally necessary in society to ensure that we have you know, the common goods being achieved. Some laws, of course, directly serve the basic goods, and we can see that, of course. A law against a murder serves the basic good of life. But many laws just create that sort of stable society, and that's what we were talking about. Once you have the stable society, people are free to pursue the goods as they wish to. The author of the law should be creating a system that supports the goods, and in fact, you might say the system is only good if it does that. Now, we go further. Um, than we said before, we said perhaps you might have to obey a law that we might consider to be somewhat unjust. Actually, we can point out really, if you accept a legal system, according to Finnis, you have a legal obligation to obey every law. And the argument runs like this. I ought to pursue the basic goods. Society needs to coordinate in order to best achieve the basic goods. And the law is an effective way of coordinating society, so I should obey the law. And if you don't, well, the law is justified to sanction you so that, you know, people will obey the law. Because ultimately, remember, we are aiming at that common good and authority. We want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to serve and achieve or, or participate in the common good and the seven basic goods equally. And the law and authority should allow us to do that. That is, of course, a little bit of a perhaps whistle-stop tour of the common good and the need for authority. Do check your revision guides for a little more detail when you are filling in your worksheet. Don't forget, we also have the digital copy of the draft of the ethics textbook. Probably a little more information in there than you need, but particularly going for higher level, it's not a bad idea to have a read-through and maybe add just a little bit more detail. But that should cover the essentials. We still have empty boxes for the strengths of natural law and the weaknesses of natural law, and we will fill those in next time when we evaluate Finnis. But that's going to be enough for today. So please try and get your worksheet filled in. If you do have any questions, please make a note of those and email them to me uh, later on today, and then hopefully I can answer those when I do our next session. In the meantime, look after yourselves, and I'll speak to you soon.